when you're stuck thinking of your past, it can bring up depression, it can bring up you know negative feelings of sadness or unresolved uh, emotions. The ideal spot is to try to just stay present in 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 that sense. So, do you, how would you tie that into managing thought? Well, um, being present. So, and and for many people, they they'll they'll set that as a goal. I want to be more present. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's another one. They'll say more present. Mm -hmm which is meaning I'm not present. It's focusing mm -hmm. on what I am not. Mm -hmm. And so I want, I'm want i focusing on being present. So when a thought is delivered to me, uh, that thought is, is a past thought that I've practiced, and that could be a thought I've practiced in the past, mm -hmm. about the past. It could be a thought I've practiced mm -hmm. in the past, about the future, <laughs> you know, either mm -hmm. way. So when I pause and I wonder what I could choose to think right now, then I am in, in the present. The, the thoughts that really bring us our highest power mm -hmm. are thoughts of vision and purpose and intention mm -hmm. that, are in, that are true to us, right? I can think thoughts till I'm blue in the face mm -hmm. if they're not true to me. Sincerity always rules, right? Thoughts of wonder and possibility, thoughts of thankfulness, thoughts of celebration, anything that brings me to a state of peace and calm, that's when I'm in my highest state. State of wonder, state of calm, peace, state of, of uh, intention and purpose, and all of those are true to me. They all bring about peace mm -hmm. and bring in inspiration. So when I notice that I'm not at peace, mm -hmm. or I'm, 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 notice, I, I'm not at peace in sadness and depression mm -hmm. is not at peace, um, that's, I'm simply in fight, flight, and freeze because whatever that thought is, is out of alignment with who I am now. Mm -hmm. And then I have practiced being sad. I've practiced being depressed. And then, then those, those thoughts, thoughts come to me. So when I, when I wonder what I could be thankful for mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. when I wonder how I, uh, what I could create right now, mm -hmm when I wonder what I could celebrate right now, that keeps me present. If I pause and take a breath and exhale as much as I can, I am also being present. And that the breath is really quite, quite powerful because I exhale out mm. those thoughts. I exhale out everything physical that's happened with them. And then on the inhale, um, I can simply inhale, or I can also wonder what I choose, choose to create right now. To me, every thought that I have, every, every fight, flight, and freeze mm -hmm. thought, a thought of sadness, thought of depression, I'm not asking people to, to never, ever, ever have them again. Um, what causes stress is holding those thoughts. So when I have it, every one of those thoughts is telling me, at the essence, who I am and what I want to create. You know, if I'm sad about something, uh, you know, if I'm angry about something, you know, that means that's not who I am. Then I can wonder, okay, what is it I want to create? If I'm envious of something, that means I want something. How could I create that? Um, the key is, is state of wonder. I, I can't even begin to describe how much power each and every one of us has to create absolutely anything that we can imagine. Absolutely anything. And, and we all have the power to do that. And when we pause and wonder, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's Indiana Jones time. Mm -hmm. It's adventure time. We are creation machines. Um, let's create it, you know, so. There's so much you said I'm, I'm in there. I'm so passionate about no, this. I am, so, I am too, and I'm just holding myself back too because there's so many things that you've said in there that I, I want to comment on. Um, one is, I love your work on the fight, flight, or freeze. The mm -hmm. freeze part of that was new to me when I when I got introduced to your work. Um, I, I would love to comment on that, but before I do, the other part that, that has me charged up is really about the emotional mastery side of this, that the thoughts that we have can elicit emotions and mm -hmm. that we can, in a sense, control our emotional state as a result of the thoughts that we allow ourselves to believe are true for ourselves. Yeah. I think that... Being an emotional person and always, you know, just from a teenager feeling like I wanted to get control over my emotional, you know, self, mm -hmm. 
I, I think if had I been introduced to this work then, saying actually that emotional state has so much to do with you, how you, what you're how you're thinking, mm -hmm. that I could say okay, this isn't just emotions flooding over me like I'm a victim, you know, or just happening to me. Mm -hmm. That I am actually pulling forth in a sense emotions based on what I'm focusing on, mm -hmm. and that is is such powerful work to me. Mm -hmm. So I think um, the emotional side of of how, how thoughts really manifest emotions, I think, is, is really exciting for me. And then also that idea of being able to identify when you're going into that fight, flight, or freeze mode, what that can tell you about your, your state and, and how to start to get a handle on your emotions mm -hmm. or your thoughts. Yeah, to me, a, a, an emotion is a thought in motion, mm -hmm. right? So for something mm -hmm. to become reality, I think it. Then I say mm -hmm. something, I do something. Uh, the thought is now in the body, it's mm. in, the, in the physical plane. And so the emotion is the thought in the body, mm -hmm. right? And so, and that's, and that's why being aware of how I feel can be the, the, the first grand step of self-awareness. And then to me, the essence of every one of those thoughts is telling me who I am and what, and what I really want. Mm. And, and oftentimes, I mean, we're, we're uh, creative beings. We're expansive beings. And so we are always uh, expanding and creating the next version of the highest vision of ourselves. We're always doing that. And so, and if my brain and my mouth and my thoughts are, are coming from my past, mm. right, then I, am, I have the potential to always be out of alignment. Right, and stuck there in the past. I could right. get stuck because what happens, what happens for all of us is when anything is different mm -hmm. than what I have stored in my brain, because one of my brain's functions is to keep me safe, mm -hmm. keep me efficient, effective, out of danger. Mm -hmm. So if anything is different than what I have stored in my brain, then I'm going to get a fight, flight, and freeze thought mm -hmm. that I have practiced mm -hmm. in that instance. Many of us have a huge buffet mm -hmm. of fight, flight, and freeze thoughts that we've practiced. You know, when I listen to this in the news, I get angry. Uh, when this person calls me, I get frustrated. When this happens, blah, blah, blah. You know, so we have all the, the, the gamut, you know, the full buffet of fight, flight, and freeze thoughts that we've practiced. And some of us focus on one entree. And so then, and then we say, oh, I'm suffering from depression mm -hmm. or addiction or whatever that might be. So when folks are, read the book or in, in the workshops mm -hmm. and realize, well, wait a minute, mm -hmm. that's, that's a service that's being, it, it's the same as having pain in my body. It's a fight, flight and freeze thought. It's making me aware that something is out of alignment. Mm -hmm. That's what a fight, flight and freeze mm -hmm. thought is. So when I pause and take take my breath, then I, I can, you know, I, I can transcend from there. The well, th and, and most of us are in fight, flight, and freeze the whole day. Mm -hmm. We don't even know it. And we're going to be, because I'm always changing. Yeah. You're always changing. The environment. We're different. Right. Stuff's constantly, everything is different from what I have stored in my brain. So when I let go of it, can let go of that, and practice taking a breath and wondering what I could create right now, mm -hmm. um, then, then I can, can move from that. It seems too that we fight ourselves a lot or have judgments of our own thoughts a lot and that by understanding that the brain is serving you to be safe and, and whatnot, it, it can almost provide you a little bit more of a kind of a self um, acceptance in a sense like it instead of fighting with ourselves or thinking negatively about what these thoughts are trying to do to us you know or, or the state is trying to put mm -hmm. us in that doesn't feel comfortable that we can thank it for its service in a sense like and say I got it from here that I, I'm choosing a more empowered or positive way of looking at yeah it. I can thank my brain for sharing mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and it's and I'm not saying that everything in my brain is is useless. Mm -hmm. It's the difference is I don't mm -hmm. have to attach to it anymore. Okay. I have the the freedom to thank it 
and decide, okay, and then and wonder what it is that I, I choose to create. I can I can move in in that direction. Well, the attachment part is what's kind of interesting to me too, because it seems like what we attach to, it, it clearly serves a need for some reason, right? Even if it is depression or even if it is addiction, there is some need that's being served, even if it's at a low level. So it's maybe to get into a place where we can, we can detach from what's really not serving us at a high level and come up with new, more empowering ways to reach the, you know, to meet those needs. I, I could say that it is perhaps meeting a need. I don't know if it's necessarily serving me. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, something serves me when it is moving me into a state of peace mm -hmm. and inspiration and moving me into creating what's next. When I speak in the present tense, then I'm very conscious of what it is that I'm creating. And a lot of our thoughts are not in the present tense. You know, if we say we need to do something, mm -hmm. that's not present. Mm -hmm. Should do something, that's not in the present. Mm -hmm. uh, will do something is not in the present. When I notice how I feel, mm -hmm. then if I express what that need is that I think is being served, mm -hmm. I can feel if that is bringing me peace or inspiring mm -hmm. or, or not, or is, is it constricting and contracting me? And we, you were talking about the people cr criticizing or judging the, you know, the thoughts that mm -hmm. they have, and that was a huge, huge aha for me. I was the queen of self-criticism mm -hmm. under the guise of self-improvement mm -hmm. and being the best person Mm -hmm. I could be, right? And so I actually had crossed the line from being in a state of power to being in a state of force, mm -hmm. right? And so that was the huge aha. And, and so I realized, you know, if I'm expansive by nature, which we all are, so I'm expansive by nature, I set goals. And, and so now, let's say I'm setting a goal and it's going to take 15,000 steps to achieve it. And then I say, I just finished step 15, okay? Well, the old me would say, instead of saying, I just finished step 15, it would say, well, I've got 4,985 steps to go. I'm not there yet, long way to go. And I can feel myself constricting and contracting, and I'm preventing my ability to create what's next. Then when I'm at step 4,985, I know I'm going to achieve the goal, and I'm creative and expansive by nature, mm -hmm. so I set a new goal. And that was the aha. If I couldn't be happy until a goal was in place and perfect, and they were always overlapping, when would I ever be happy? Even when you met a goal, it wasn't good enough. It would be the right. next one, the next one. And, and that's the thing. If I'm always creating mm -hmm. the next version of the highest vision of myself, mm -hmm. and my brain is very quickly delivering to me mm -hmm. the old me, I could be in fight, flight, and freeze mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. I could be constantly in a state of criticism. And that's the thing. If I go into a room and it's dark and then I turn the light on, I don't get pissed that it was dark before. Mm -hmm. Right? I enjoy the light. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing is for me is to make it a practice to be aware of how far I've come mm -hmm. And, and affirm my commitment to what I'm creating next. Have you found that it's more difficult for people to get out of the, the cycle of, of the thought patterns when they've had some kind of trauma in their past, um, something, some kind of tragedy or, or maybe suffering from a PTSD type of incident? It definitely creates a challenge because one of my brain's function main functions is to keep me safe mm -hmm. and out of danger. Mm -hmm. And when something traumatic has happened and the, my brain has that, uh, you know, as a mission. And so for folks that do uh, have those kinds of experiences, it's very helpful for them to realize that they're not their brains, 
This is not what's mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. right now. Now that's focused on what I don't want. Mm -hmm. So that I want to switch it to a thought of of what to be present with what I want to create. So then I move it to um, what is going on right now. What could I create right now? Mm -hmm. um, you know, thank my brain for sharing. So with some people, it's not necessary. And I don't usually recommend for people to say, I'm not my brain, because that's focused on what I don't want, right? Mm -hmm.